Okay, welcome to the second little video in these uh, fan wiring uh, demonstrations. Um, in this one we've got the same fan as we had before and the same uh, power supply unit. So if you recall we double checked that that uh, was capable of supplying 12 volts at 12 volts DC at 1 amp and that the fan uh, only required uh, 12 volts DC at 0.92 of an amp. So we know that that power supply can provide enough power to run this fan. Um, and then we're going to add this other small little circuit. It's a called an interval timer or an automation um, control timer. It's a really cheap little unit. You can pick them up on eBay for about uh, $20. Um, they come in this little plastic housing. Sometimes you might get one that doesn't come with a housing. Um, it's handy to have the housing just to protect it a little bit. Um, and you'll see it has three connections on each side. It has an input side and an output side. And uh, this is a really handy little unit that can do a lot of different things. So it can be a little challenging to set up and program. But first I'm going to show you how to wire it up. Now you can do this still inside its housing if you like, or uh, I'm going to do it outside its housing just so it's a little easier to see. So again, we're going to do this with our, our uh, transformer, our plug pack disconnected from the power supply. So nothing shorts out while we're doing it. So um, you've got this wiring diagram available to you as a download PDF, um, uh, but it's, it's quite a simple bit of wiring to do. Don't worry about too much about what these different things mean, um, but um, we just wire it up the way that the diagram shows us to. So like I said, you've got this download inside the course um, for you to print out if you like and follow while you do the actual, di actual wiring. So uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take uh, the power supply wires, which we bared earlier, and I'm going to take the, the positive which is this one here. And you can see down here in this diagram, we've got a little explanation that the, the positive is the one with the white stripe or it's a red one as it's shown in the diagram. And we're going to just, uh, we're gonna get another bit of wire from somewhere um, to just any bit of, a, of wire around the, the right thickness will be fine. And we're just gonna make sure that has enough uh, bared end at both ends. No, I don't need it at the other end because I don't need to join the wires together. We're just going to put that straight into the terminal. And then I'm just going to twist these two together. So like before, if we just untwist them a little bit and untwist these ones just a little bit, that'll ensure that we get a slightly better connection. Then we're going to twist these up, but this time we're not going to tape them up because we need them to be bare so we can put them into the terminal. Now you might want to just um, use your scissors or use a pair of pliers to just trim that off so it's nice and neat at the end and nice and short. And just watch those little bits of wire don't go anywhere. Like inside the electronics of your timer circuit. Okay, so that first one where the positive is connected to this little extra piece of wire, which is here, I'm going to connect that to the first terminal. So you might need a, quite a small screwdriver to do this, and you want to make sure that it's nice and loose to start with, so that you can easily insert the wire into that gap. So there we go, we've inserted it in. You can see that. And it will kind of, these ones have a little uh, bit of spring steel in there, which actually clamps it in straight away. So they can be a little hard to pull out. And you've got to be careful when you're pulling them out because sometimes they pull this little tab out with them. Um, so once you've got that pushed in there, just tighten up that screw. And there we have it. That's all connected up now. That first terminal. Now, the output of this one just goes into the second terminal down, the common. It's actually marked on the back there, common. Um, so 
Again, just make sure that's nice and loose before you try and put it in there. And then just insert, nothing else needs to go into that hole, just the one connection. I'm going to put that in there like that. And tighten that up. Now, on the output side, sorry, on the negative side of the um, circuit, we need to put this one into there. And, but we also need to join it to the negative side of the fan. So here's my fan. I'm going to do the same thing as I did before and twist these two together before putting them into the terminal. There's my wires. And a quick little twist. Make sure they're firmly joined. And again, I'm just going to trim these off a little bit just so that they are a little easier to put into the Just always be careful with those little tiny bits of wire. Okay, now we're going to insert that into the ground connection, which is also marked GND on there. And same deal, we're going to just make sure that that's nice and loose before we do this. And insert that in. Nice and deep, so it can't short out. And then we're just going to tighten that one up. Nice and tight, nice and tight. So we're almost done. Our last connection that we need to make is we just need to connect the, uh, the positive side of the fan to this CK, which is the normally open connection. I'm not sure why it's called CK, um, but it is. I'm just going to bend this one over and I'm going to twist it up as well. Nice and neat, and I'm going to, once again, make sure that that's nice and loose, then insert this into that terminal and tighten it right up. Now, now we've got it all connected up, if you've got an enclosure for it already, we can put it in the enclosure. These just snap together. Like that. And it's nice and neat. And you can see how similar that is to our diagram. We've got the positive from the power supply going to the first terminal at the top there. Um, another wire going around to the middle terminal on this side. The negative going to the bottom terminal or the ground terminal on this side of the timer. And that is also connected to the negative of the fan. And the positive of the fan connected to the third terminal on the output side. Um, before we actually turn it on, uh, just make sure that your fan is sitting uh, flat down onto the surface of your desk and um, you'll notice, remember those arrows, make sure that it's um, sitting in a way that the air is going to blow upwards, not downwards or like this, because this particular powerful fan like this, it'll just rush across the desk quite quickly and probably catch your fingers as you try to stop it. So um, look at those arrows, make sure it's blowing upwards um, so that it sucks itself down to the desk and doesn't move very much. Okay, so um, now the reason we do that is because we don't know what state the time is in. Uh, it might just switch on as soon as we put the power on. Um, this first button turns it on and off or reverses its state. If it's on, it'll turn it off. If it's off, it'll turn it on. Um, so uh, if it's going through its timer circuits, um, then uh, it's in its on state then uh, that use that to turn it off. So we'll see what it does when we plug it into our power supply. Ah, it's in its off state. So um, it's counting down there from about 20 seconds. Let's switch it on manually and off again. There is actually a little blue indicator light um, on this that's a little hard to see. There it is, just turned on and off. On and off, on and off. 
So this is currently counting down between look like 20 seconds and five seconds. Um, so at the moment it's off for 20 seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. And on for five seconds and off for 20 seconds. If I wanted it to be on for 20 seconds and off for five seconds, I just hit the button like that. Now it's on. And off for five. And now it'll turn back on for 20. But I can reverse it. Now it's off for 20 and on for five. Okay, so how do we actually set this? The first thing we do is to make sure it's in this type of program. So if I hold this down, you can see that there's actually, it has multiple different program states. It has program four, program one, program two, program three, program four. So one, two, three, four. Now all of these behave different ways and use the inputs in different ways and the outputs in slightly different ways. The one that we want for an on period and an off period um, is program three. So we want that. So once we've got that program three, we can then hit the timer control, time control button here. So now it's in, it's, it had six seconds left. Now it's got five seconds off. It's going to turn on again because the two times are set at between 20 and 5 seconds. Now to change those two times, I just hold this second button down. And there's my first time period, which is 20 seconds. Um, now I used our calculator that's linked to from the lesson um, to our fresh air exchange calculator to put in the size of our fr little fruiting chamber and the model number of this fan. And it calculated that um, it needs to be 709 seconds on and uh, 11, sorry, 709 seconds off followed by 11 seconds on. Okay. So um, this first button will uh, change which which numeral we're affecting, and the second button will change the value of the numeral. So if I wanted to go to 709, um, I've got the first one selected, so that needs to be a 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. If we go past it, it just goes back to 0. The second digit needs to be a 0, so I hit this one again, it'll move to the next digit. It needs to become a 0. The third digit has to be a 9. Now, as soon as I hit this again to set, it'll move on to the second uh, time period, to set the value for the second time period. Now, um, I'm going to switch it off immediately using that button again. So it's going to turn on. And I'm going to switch it off. And now I need to go, uh, well, it doesn't need to be, it needs to be 11 seconds. So the first digit needs to be still zero. The second digit needs to be 11. The third digit needs to be 11 seconds. And then when I push that, it will, it will set. No, when I put, to push this, it'll set that at 709 and 11 seconds. And it'll start counting down. Now... When it first started, it had the 709 as the on period and the 11 seconds as the off period. But because I just changed it here, it changed it to um, 709 seconds for the off period and 11 seconds for the on period. And one other thing that you might come across is sometimes the decimal place can be moved. So this could be counting in milliseconds, which would be very rapid. You just use this third one to change that. So you'll see what happened here. At the moment, the decimal place is off to the right there. So it's 709 seconds. Press it again, and it's 70.9 seconds. Press it again, and it goes back to 709 seconds. So it moves the decimal place back over there. So you've got two options. That's if you want to do really accurate timing of short intervals. 
So this will count down all the way to um, zero. When it gets down to zero, it will flip over to the on state and the fan will run for 11 seconds and then it will flip back over to the off state and run for 709 seconds. It would count for 709 seconds before it then turns on again for 11 seconds. It just keeps doing that over and over and over and over again. And for $20, this is a really bomb-proof and simple way to control your intake fan to mean that you've got accurate control of your fresh air exchange in your mushroom fruiting chamber. Good luck and let me know or let us know in the, in the comments um, or the community if you've got any problems and um, we'll help you out. Bye-bye.